Good afternoon, welcome to my laboratory. Um, this is my build of a Slayer Exciter. I was inspired to do this by um, seeing the Kickstarter project of Tesla Tronics, where he is selling kits for these Slayer Exciters. Uh, calling them solid-state Tesla coils. Well, you could call it a solid-state Tesla coil. It's kind of a stretch to do that, though. This is a very, very low-powered solid-state Tesla coil. That, over there, is a solid-state Tesla coil. But we won't talk about that right now. This is about this layer exciter. I've been meaning to build one for quite some time and uh, finally spurred into doing it because of the uh, the design and construction of the one that Tesla Tronics is displaying. It made my teeth hurt to look at it. So yesterday I decided to see what I could whip up just out of scraps that I had lying around the laboratory. So I made a base. I have this, this piece of lucite from 10 years ago and another one there. So, uh, a base and a little platform. This is a, a another piece of plastic on one inch standoff spacers with some studs mounted to it that will receive uh, some connections in a moment. And then um, to mount the secondary up through here, I just took a medicine bottle and uh, screwed the lid of it to the base. And then the medicine bottle itself is uh, shimmed with some tape, and then that makes a really good sliding fit for the secondary to be mounted on in there. And then uh, here is the secondary itself. This is a, a bunch of turns of number 27 magnet wire. There's probably about 800 or 850 turns on there. I wound this by hand, just sitting here watching an episode of DL and Pasco on YouTube. And as you can see, I've terminated it with some uh, some connectors. So let's see. This 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 end is the bottom end. So I just guide that down through there. That on to the medicine bottle, like that. And there's the secondary mounted in place. And this wire will come over here in a moment. Okay, now here's the primary. I wound this primary. I probably could have used four turns, but it's really got about five, four and three quarter turns of uh, stiff copper number 12 or 14 house wiring with some terminals on it. And it's wound uh, loosely and coupled a little bit away from the secondary um, so that the secondary is able to continue ringing once it's stimulated. So that just slides right over there and then fits onto the studlies like that. Okay. And that'll straighten up once once I actually put the put the nuts on, hopefully. Okay. And then this is the electronics module. This is the oscillator module here. Uh, it's just a TIP31 NPN power transistor. I used a 31A because I didn't have a 31C. The only difference is the maximum voltage. But the 31A is holding up for my applications. Likewise with the diodes, the schematic specifies fast recovery uh, 1000 volt 1 amp rectifiers here. I just used 1N4007 diodes there. They seem to work fine. It might work better with faster ones, but the 
a modern uh, 4007 series rectifier is pretty darn fast and for the frequencies we're dealing with here it seems to work alright and then uh, a fixed resistor for the pull up and then uh, just that's that's it that's the whole that's the whole oscillator alright let's see if I can put this together with one hand stay on there. Oh, I want to put the washers on first. Sorry. A little bit of time spent with uh, layout and connectors um, really winds up paying off in the long run, I've found. It makes your projects look neat and uh, gives you a very satisfactory appearance. But if you don't use a lot of clip leads, you probably aren't going to find much free energy, unfortunately. Put this on there tight. So, this is the negative power connector, this is the positive power connector, and that's just sort of sitting there. Now, the top load, um, oh man, top loads. Top loads can be a problem. You can make really nice top loads out of flexible dryer duct. That one works really well. But if you don't have, uh, for, for, for this one, I decided to see what I could improvise. So, I used a peanut can. The peanut can is already silvered on the inside. Uh, and that's fine, but just to improve the appearance, I also put some aluminum duct tape around on the outside. So that's your peanut can, and I left it, I put it open on the top, and that was, uh, it was interesting that I did that. I didn't know what would happen, but some interesting things do happen, so I'll show you what that is uh, later on. And then also there's, there's another medicine jar uh, to make the, the fit into the coil itself and then I've got the little quick disconnect here which becomes another turn of the secondary. I'm going to have to use, probably have to use both hands for to connect that. Maybe I can do it with one hand. Uh, sorry for the extreme close-up. I'm trying to connect the connecting connector. Now you could probably do this much more easily just, just by uh, dangling a wire in there, but I wanted a positive connection uh, to do the very best possible performance. So it goes up in there very neatly. Now the whole thing is uh, assembled and ready to go, so let's get some power to it. Uh, here's the connection from the power Oops, sorry about that. From the power supply. Positive and negative. And uh, there you go, a Slayer Exciter. Oh, maybe you should sh show some kind of effect happening. Huh? Okay, well, I just now turned on the oscilloscope. I've got the oscilloscope probe just connected to this other peanut can up there. That's all it's connected to. And uh, there's the waveform that it's picking up and here I'll just move my hand near the coil and you can see how that waveform changes from me moving my hand around and I guess you can, let's see if I can do this without blowing out the camera there, I can draw a tiny little high frequency high voltage arc from the coil itself and from the capacity and of course the gutted fluorescent lights up brilliantly uh, and uh, ouch. Oops, sorry everything tangled up here this is a this is a 220 volt neon pilot light okay now here's the part that I think is really interesting and special. This cup capacity should form some kind of almost a Faraday cage and the, the theory is that 
you don't have any electric field going on inside a closed container. Uh, of course, this is not really a closed container. It's more like a bucket. But watch this. I, I don't... I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to stick my finger in there. Can you see that? I just get my finger just to where it's just poking the invisible surface and that makes that compact fluorescent tube turn on full brilliantly. I'm not touching it. Okay, and uh, I, let's see. This is, uh, er, sorry about that. Sorry about the delay. Again, this is unrehearsed. Oh, all this is happening, by the way, at 12 volts input, about 120 milli or, or about 200 milliamps. This is my external ground. It's out to a, to a pipe uh, driven into the ground, and so if I just dangle that in there, I don't don't touch anything with it. I just dangle it in there. I get that light turning on brilliantly. Alright, that's the Slayer Exciter Tinsel Koala build. Um, I would not call this a Tesla coil, even though it has features of a Tesla coil. But it's really so, so low powered that uh, and and you don't really have a great match there in terms of resonance, although it is driving itself at its own resonant frequency, that's for sure. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you.